Hi Oni. I'm so confused to do my economic task. Can you explain it to me? Sure. What's the topics? The topics is about economics modern from Keynes and some Nelson's thought. Okay, I will explain it so reason and understand it. John Maynard Keynes is known as the first person to be able to explain simply the causes of the Great Depression. The Great Depression that occurred in the 1930s is an economic event that is considered the most traumatic in the history of the 20th century. Keynesian economic represents a new way of looking at spending, output, and inflation. Previously, classical economic talk held that cyclical change in employment and economic output would adjust accordingly. On the other hand, Keynesian talk argues that the government needs to intervene to restore economic equilibrium, important case to increase government spending and lower taxes to implement and pull the economic out of depression. In John Maynard Keynes' 1936 book The General Theory of Employment, Interest and Money, Keynes thought that Capitalism is inherently unstable and does not tend towards full employment. The government can increase and decrease the aggregate to cope with turmoil without eliminating capitalism, but at the same time rejects the idea of the need for nationalization of the economy, which price fixing and intervention in supply and demand. What the government needs to do is to control the capitalist vehicle and return it to the path of prosperity by implementing a budget deficit policy and conducting competition for public work which will increase the price of tours, not by lowering prices and which is usually done by the classics. For the next is Keynes' thoughts and concepts. Number one, the desire to consume or propensity to consume. Total aggregate income is equal to aggregate total consumption plus aggregate total investment. The level of consumption depends on the person's desire to consume, which is a function of income, likewise with savings, because savings are the remaining part of income that is not used for consumption and also the level of investment on by the person or with the formula is i is c plus s plus i and number two the interest rate which is related to the liquidity preference liquidity preference interest rate according to Keynes, is not a reflection of the supply of savings and investment demand but the interest rate is an independent variable of these two things. And number three is marginal efficiency of capital investment. The level of investment is determined by the marginal efficiency of capital investment, which is influenced by investors' expectations on future returns from the capital investment function. And then number four is liquidity preference. It explains how the interest rate is determined in the short term and the interest rate is adjusted to balance the demand for money and supply of money. Next Number 5 is about wages. Keynes argued that it is nominal wages that bind workers and cause unemployment. So, to reduce unemployment, the solution is to reduce real wages by lowering nominal wages greater than the inflation rate. 
for the last is number six. It about savings. According to Keynes, the saving rate should be higher than the investing plan, but it's also not good if the saving rate is excessive because it will have an impact on the occurrence of an economic recession and even depression. Oh, I see. So, do you know about Keynes economics principles? Yeah. In my book, it explained that there are there are seven principles according to Keynesian thought. Number one, focus on the short term. Two, aggregate demand is the main driver to stimulate output. Three, Keynes assumed that price and wage were rigid. Four, aggregate demand is a useful tool for controlling inflation and ending of recessions. Five, an increase in aggregate demand eliminates cyclical unemployment. Six, the quantitative of money is only valid in the long run. Seven, individuals act more based on instincts, emotions, and spontaneous urge to act or animal spirit. Wow, your insight is very broad. How if we continue to the next topic? Okay, let's move to the summer sun's thought. Next is about Samuelson talk. Professor Paul Anthony Samuelson, an economics from MIT, has collected at least six definitions of economics. When summarized, are as follows: one, economics or political economy is a study of activities which, with or without the use of money, involve exchange transaction between people. Two. Economics is a study of how people make the right choice to utilize productive resources, includes lands, upper capital goods such as machinery and technical knowledge that are scarce and limited in number, to produce various types of goods such as wheat, meat, coats, silk pots, music concert, roads, planes, and distribute them to various members of society for consumption. Number three, economic is the study of human in their daily activities to earn and enjoy life. The fourth, economic is the study of how humans behave like to organize their consumption and productive activities. Five, economic is a study of wealth and less economic is study of ways to improve society. From this various definition, Summerson concludes that economics is the study of the ways in which human and society determine or make choice, with or without using money, to use scarce productive resources that can have alternative use to produce various goods and distribute them for consumption. Consume but now and in the future to various group and group society economists analyze the magnitude of the cost and benefit that occur due to improvement in the pattern of allocation of economic resources some of the main things contained in the definition of economic above are number one the main problem or central problem in economic is the problem of choice number two the fact that productive resources are something that is scarce. Number three, its use in economic is a secondary issue. Number four, production and consumption will always exist both in collective, individual, capitalist, socialist, societies, and others. Plus, there is an allocation of costs and benefit or profit from resource. Mm. But what the differences and relationships of economic thought by Keynes and Summerson? The differences and relationships of economic thought by Keynes and Summerson is Differences and relationship of economic talk according to Keynes and Summerson First, Keynes and Summerson difference in economic talk 
economic talk according to kindness, namely kindness believed that the government felt intervened to moderate fluctuation in the economic cycle. By changing spending or taxes, governments can influence aggregate output and inflation. Meanwhile, according to Samuelson, economic talk is the study of how humans make their choice with or without using money to take advantage of productive research that are usable as alternative to produce various commodities from time to time and distribute them for present and future consumption. Second, kindness and Samuelson economic talk relationship. The relationship between kindness and Samuelson's economic thinking is that they both require government intervention in solving problems. According to kindness, in overcoming economic problems, Keynesians believe that the government must intervene actively and consciously to control the economy toward a full.